Hey band friends! It's time to learn a new note on your instrument. In this video, we're going to teach you your seventh note. A little history though, first. On pages two through eight of your Sound Innovations lesson book, we learned a basic fundamental initial set of five notes, the basic five notes that we started the year with. And then on page 11, we introduced our sixth note. Now on page 12, we're introducing our seventh note. For each instrument and band, we're going to address where that note lives on the staff or what it looks like in notation. And then we're going to address for each instrument, how do you play it? What fingering do you use? Uh, how tight does your mouth, uh, your embouchure need to be or loose? Or um, what slide position for trombones? And then we're going to look at the first exercise in the book, which is exercise number 41 called Sounds New that introduces this new note. Okay, so let me get my instruments and fingering charts for each of the instruments and let's show you instrument by instrument the new seventh note. For the flute, low A, second space of the treble clef staff is going to be fingered with the first two keys on the left hand and the thumb and then the pinky on the right hand. So again, left hand, thumb underneath, first two keys, one and two, and then on the right hand, just the pinky. And it should sound like this. You can check it out and play along with me. It's, it should sound low, like this. So that's low A for flute. And for clarinet, the new note is low B. Now low B on the staff is underneath low C, which is on that ledger line below the staff. So the B is underneath the line that we use for low C. And fingering wise, it's fingered like a low C, right? With the thumb behind, right? The thumb down here, and then the first, second, and third finger. So that's like a C. Then you're just going to add one more key, the second finger on the lower hand, the bottom hand. So left hand is like a C, thumb, one, two, three, and right hand is just the second finger. And here's what a low B sounds like, and you can play along with me. It should, it should match my sound. On the alto saxophone, the new note is low F sharp. So there's the, what this generation would call a hashtag in front of the F, that's a sharp sign, and it's on the bottom space of the staff. So F sharp has a sharp sign in front of the F on the bottom space of the staff. Here's how it's fingered on the alto saxophone. It's fingered like a G up top, one, two, three with the left hand, right? The first three keys up here, but then down below, it's just the second finger. The second finger added to G makes it F sharp. And here's what an F sharp sounds like for our alto saxophones. And you could play along altos and try to match this sound. And for our tenor saxes, the new note is B on the third line of the treble clef staff. B is fingered with just the first key on the left hand, and that's it. So just the first key on the left hand, nothing else. And here is what a B sounds like. And for our trumpet players, the new note is low B. Low B is just like it was for clarinet. The ledger line that low C is on, we're going to go just under that ledger line. So the space below low C is a low B. It's a low note, so brass players have to relax their embouchure, not be tight. So when I play a low B, I'm going to maybe just relax a little bit more than I would, not be so firm as I was for some of the higher notes. Second valve, the middle valve, is what we're going to use for low B, and it sounds like this. All right, and our trombones are going to be learning the new note low A. It's on the bottom space of the bass clef staff. So the bottom space is low A, and low A is played in second position, maybe just about an inch or an inch and a half of um, exposed metal here. That's second position. Remember, first position, like we had for B flat or F, was all the way in. And then second position is just about an inch or an inch and a half out. And to play a low A, since it's a low note, we're going to relax our embouchure a little bit, not get too tight. And as we blow, lots of air, but relaxed embouchure, this is what a low A would sound like. And baritone friends, your low A will look and sound just like the trombone low A. It's on the bottom space of the bass clef staff. You'll play it though with your second valve, right? Your second valve, the middle valve. Relax your embouchure and blow. 
Okay, so let's take a look at exercise number 41, Sounds New, in your Sound Innovations lesson book. I happen to have the flute music up right now on screen, but we could be looking at any of the instruments, clarinet, trumpet, tenor sax, alto sax, tuba, it wouldn't matter. So don't worry that the music on the screen isn't the same as what's in your book. It's just that we all have different notes because we all play different instruments. Um, you're going to see that in the first measure, you have a whole note version of that new note, the note we just showed you how to play. Right, a whole note is four beats long. And then in the third measure, at the end of the third measure, you have a half note, that same note, that same new note, it's now a half note, which is only two beats. And then in the last measure, we have a quarter note version of that new note, which is only one. So isn't it interesting that when it's presented at the beginning of the song, we're gonna hold it for four beats. When we see it in the middle of the song, it's going to be two beats or half that. And then at the end of the song, it's only going to be for one beat. And of course, there's a few other notes. So what I'd like to do is, regardless of what instrument you have in your hand right now, whatever instrument you want to play, um, why don't you play the whole note version of the seventh note that we just taught you. Play it along with me. I'm on flute, so I'll be playing an A. Whatever instrument you're playing, play that new seventh note that we just introduced. But let's play it for four beats together. Here we go. One, two, Ready and go. All right, so there's the new note as a whole note. Now let's do the same new note when it occurs in the third measure, at the end of the third measure. Let's do it as a two beat half note. Here we go. One, two, ready and play. Okay, only two beats. And now let's play it for just one beat like it occurs in the last measure. Here we go. One, two, ready, and play. Okay, and of course, in between those three uh, versions of the new note, we have some other notes that you'll have to figure out as well. Hopefully you recognize all those notes. Okay, at this point I suggest you stop the video, just take a minute or two to review all the notes in exercise number 41, and then come on back and we're going to go ahead and play exercise 41 straight through with smart music accompaniment. And we're back. All right, we're ready to now play exercise number 41, Sounds New, with smart music accompaniment. First, we'll hear a four-beat count-off, and then we'll be playing. Play along with me. Here we go. Two, three, four. So how'd you do? If you had problems, I suggest you break the problem down to just the measure or measures where the problem occurred. For instance, if you had a problem changing between the quarter notes and the last measure, just work that last measure a few times. Then repeat it. Then repeat it again. Until you get really comfortable and confident playing those notes. Then go back and try the whole song. Anyway, congratulations on learning your seventh note. Now go practice.